Next up on Beyond the Clef, we have Mike Ware, a retired choir director, and he's going to be talking to us about conducting. Beyond the Clef is presented by Director's Choice. Well, thank you so much for being on the program. And so you are uh, retired now, and you uh, spent a good deal of time in Conroe at the Woodlands High School, yeah, and then also Team EA Past President. Thank you for your service for that. So thank you so much for being on the program, and I think today we're going to be talking a little bit uh, about conducting. So overall, like, tell me what we were talking before the program started about um, your overall vision about conducting and what it needs to be. And, and sometimes conducting, to me, it ends up being me just, all right, guys, let's get through this floor door, window, ceiling, right, right just to get through the nuts and the bolts. Right. Tell me what you, what you think about um, the musicality of it. Uh, one of the one of the things I've been real passionate about in in retirement is uh, going and helping young teachers in clinics, doing in services for school districts for choir directors, and uh, the title of the in services is, is strategies for musical conducting, and you know first and foremost, whether you're a young teacher or an experienced teacher, you you need to sit down with the score and do a conductor's analysis, and you know just because a piece of music is set in 4-4 four, four time. Choral music, choral music, we deal with the text. And so just because a piece is set in 4-4 four, four time doesn't mean the, the text is going to be grouped in 4-4. Four, four. You know, so as choral directors, we, uh, we're charged with singing the inflection of the, the, of the text. Sometimes you may have a measure where it is, you know, where it is in 4-4, four, four, where you would conduct strong, weak, strong, weak. But the text could also be grouped in three, which is not strong, weak, strong, weak. It's strong, weak, weak. Um, you know, you need to look, look for markings in the music, that, uh, uh, crescendo markings, dynamic markings, are there articulations. Um, uh, all of those things are going are gonna to help you conduct the inflection of the text and help you conduct, it's going to help lead you in conducting the phrasing in the text. Well, now if I could take a, a step back and just say, okay, I'm a, assume, ignorant middle school teacher. And, and my question to you is, um, well, I don't really need to worry about this because the kids aren't watching me and they're not, they're not doing this. They, they, they don't need to worry about the music and the, they just don't need to worry about the beat pattern, right? What do you say to those teachers? Well, then, uh, then, all, you're conduct then, then all they're conducting is the pattern. You know, and, and as I go in and work with young teachers, a, a lot of young teachers, that's really all they're conducting. They're, conduct, they're doing a beautiful job of conducting the pattern, but they're not conducting the music. You know, even um, uh, there, there's, in 4-4 four, four time, there's an implication that beat one and three are strong. You know, and in 3-4 in time, one is strong and two and three are weak. And in 2-4 time, one is strong and two, you know. So my response would, to that would be, then you're only conducting the meter. You're not conducting the you're not conducting the music. Okay. Uh, so what are some maybe some specifics uh, as we go into conducting that really help develop the young teacher? Well, if um, I was fortunate to study with a, a man at Sam Houston, his name was Bev Henson, and he spent 42 years teaching at the college level and some of the premises that I learned from him uh, in my graduate conducting was that, uh, would you agree that time is always changing? Would you agree with that statement? Okay. Would you agree that music is organized in time? Yes. So if time is always changing and music is organized in time, then music should always be changing. You should either be getting louder or softer. You should be singing or playing to the destination of the phrase and going away, uh, you know, phrases. Uh, even if it's not, and that's that's one of the challenges with young teachers is there are there there are additions where there 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 are no dynam dynamics in the music. There there's no indication at all. But even if even if there's not a crescendo decrescendo marking in the music, it's implied that you you always get louder and softer. You you know, music grows and relaxes. Um, and the other thing is. Phrases should uh, should never plot at a you know this is my tempo you know I mean you you should never sing my country tis of the sweet that's plotting you know M music should always move and relax. Now what about the um, 
the physicalness of what you were just talking about. If I want the phrase to grow, uh, or I want crescendos and decrescendos, how do you tell somebody to ex- yeah, that's a great experience yeah. that with their hands? That's a great question. the The dynamics the the dynamics is going to is going to communicate to you the size of beat. You know, if if the dynamic is pianissimo you're obviously not going to use your whole arm to conduct or you shouldn't you know and if the and and if the dynamic is pianissimo and the articulation is staccato then all we all you would use is fingertips you wouldn't you know you wouldn't use your whole arm to you know to to so your conducting gesture should look like the, the in the style of the music the, what the music is requesting or maybe another way to say it is, you, it should look like what it sounds like. Exactly, exactly. You know, so if it's soft and short, then you would use fingertips. You know, if it's if it's a little louder and legato, then a little louder and legato, then you would use you could use you know half arm. You know, if it's marcato and really loud, then you your whole arm. You know, um, like you said, you should look. You, you should look like the music. If you expect your choir to sound a certain way, then you should show it in your conducting. You, you, just conducting patterns doesn't take care of the, the musical things. I, you know, the, 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 thing that I, the thing that I always uh, try to encourage the young teachers I work with, and the thing that I always try to encourage uh, the, the, the staff that I work with, that it, starts with it starts with score study and sitting down and, and, and identifying uh, how the text is grouped, identifying the musical things in the, in the piece of music that you need to achieve, and then translating into that, well, what can I do with my hands to communicate this piece of music? And then, uh, and then the other thing that I really try to encourage them, so many teachers don't have an accompanist. So many choral directors don't have an accompanist. So they're stuck behind the piano trying to play parts and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and especially young middle school teachers, you know, maybe two weeks before the concert, they finally get to, after the music's taught, they finally get to start actually doing some conducting. And so the thing that I really uh, try to enc- encourage them to, is to not do that. Every, at, at least 10 minutes of every class period, they need to, they need to conduct. And, they, and their conducting shouldn't be a secret to their choir. I mean, it's, it's okay to communicate to your choir, now, you know, I want this really soft here, and so this is what I'm gonna do. Or I want this really short here, so this is what I'm gonna do. Or I want this really loud here, so you'll see me do, you know. Um, so the, you know, the, the key, it, it really starts with the score study, and then, and then conducting in class as much as you can. Um, you, can you can't really accomplish uh, totally accomplish what you want to accomplish if you start conducting, really conducting two weeks before a concert. And something more to the point of what you were saying is they, it's okay to, to tell them about the gestures right. because some of the gestures that we do are, of course, inherent gestures, right. but it's okay to, especially for the younger students, to go through and teach them right. what those mean. And Absolutely. sometimes they don't even think about it. Right. So uh, I'll do with my kids all the time. I'll have, I mean, what do you think this means in the music? compared to this what do you think I'm doing and then there's sometimes younger exactly. teachers just assume that it's a natural thing but you have to actually talk about it and exactly. be open with and then the other then and the other thing is if if you're spending a lot of time in rehearsal conducting a piece and doing certain things don't change anything in the concert you know don't just all of a sudden you know the spirit moves you and you, <laughs> you know, I've been guilty of that yeah, before by accident you know, <laughs> uh, you know don't don't change what you've been right. doing for weeks in the concert you have to be disciplined yeah right yeah. well and when you were saying um, that they just two weeks before you start getting the company in then you get to conduct I've seen this in my ensembles I'm sure you have in yours that if I have a clinician come in or if maybe my assistant director takes over for the day because I'm gone or something uh, if you get somebody new in there it takes time for them to figure out how that new person is exactly. you know even even down to very precise things like where the tempo is in the beat uh, down to like what they're going to say so it, I feel like they're really robbing them of something so exactly. prioritizing having an accompanist in or maybe doing I, I guess what's a suggestion if they don't have the money to be able to bring in the accompanist right what, what do you think uh, they should do well then then just conduct them a cappella 
you know, uh, I mean, once you get the music taught, it, uh, don't wait until your accompanist is there to start conducting them. Then, then just give them pitches and, and conduct them a cappella. You know, do the musical things without the accompaniment there. Um, but but don't, don't wait until to, to, the accompanist gets there to start conducting the music. You know, I mean, we're, I, I was guilty of it. You know, you just get, you know, you go through all the hoops trying to teach them the pitches and the rhythms, you know, and you're not really thinking about musical things. You're just trying to learn the notes and the rhythms, you know, and, uh, you know, my point is you'll be, you'll achieve much more of the music if you, if, if you do it al along the way as opposed to wait till the last two weeks. Now, tell me about conducting with more than just your hands, uh, your eyes, your face. Uh, how well, does that play into it? Yeah, you know, your, um, your your face can help project a mood. You know, uh, but but I mean, not you know, ninety percent of what those kids are going to follow, uh, it, you know, is your hands. You know, which brings which brings up another. Uh, you know, a, 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 another problem, and sometimes young teachers have they have their they have the stand way too high, and so when they give a downbeat, their hand goes behind the stand. You know, make sure make sure that you have the stand set at a level where, when you're conducting, they can see all of your patterns, so that when you give a downbeat, every time you give a downbeat, your hand doesn't go behind the stand. Right. You know? Uh, my, I'm have to make fun of my assistant a little bit. Um, he's a short little Italian dude, <laughs> and I'm I'm not super tall, but I'm six one. He's five something, and so it's always funny whenever we, he gets up, he has to adjust the stand, and I always tell him, "Don't have it as high as it is for me." Right, exactly. You got to have a, a full depth of from the belt up, the yeah. whole right. range of box. Right, of it should be, and uh, it it should be at your fingertips so that you can turn the page without having to bend over. That's about where it should be. Well, you know, my arms are short, you know, so, uh, so but the, the stand should be at your fingertips so you can grab the page and turn the page without, you know, without bending over, you know. Well, I have to ask you, before we finish up here, I have to ask you one question from a dorky middle school band director right. mm -hmm. to a yeah. master teacher choir director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do choir directors not use a baton? I do. Okay. Yeah. Why do many not many choir directors not use a baton? Um, well, it just depends on who they studied with. Yeah. You know, um, I don't use a baton for everything. You know, um, I'm doing a reading session tomorrow, and uh, some of the pieces I'll use a baton. You know, my, my teacher, um, he he taught if you conduct with your hands, then the beat should be in your fingertips. The, it should be right there in your fingertips. If you conduct with a stick the beat should be in the end of the stick, not the butt of your hand, with a stick in your hand. Right. The beat should be in the tip of the stick, you know. Right. And then he taught to use you know, to use that stick and conduct wrist and half arm and whole arm. But um, I, I guess the answer to your question is it just depends on who they studied with. You know, I was fortunate, I, I did a, a master's degree with, with Dr. Henson and and he, he didn't, um, uh, he didn't stress to use a stick on everything. You know, there were times when I would ask my students, you know, which do you prefer, which is clearer, and you know, and about 90% of the time they would say the stick is clearer. You know, um, when I conduct Renaissance music, I don't use a stick. If I'm conducting something that I want to get a, a really legato gesture, I usually don't use the stick. But, so it's uh, an on-purpose decision for you right. of, of what you're doing. And, and I think a lot of people, yeah. and me included, I only use a baton. Right. So maybe it's worth exploring, and of course in front of your group, worth right. exploring different options. Right. And, um, uh, you know, another thing, uh, if, you're, if you're working with your choir and your gesture is not working, you know, don't just keep doing that gesture thinking it's eventually going to work. Think of a different way to do it. You know, and uh, there, there have been times whenever I wanted to conduct a passage of music a certain way, and it just would not work. So I had to think of that's kind of the, the essence of teaching is to think of a different way to say it or a different way to do it. So I would think of a different way, and you know, it, it, it I was never ceased to be amazed that the, the different way worked. You know, you know, don't spend 20 minutes in a rehearsal trying to get them to, you know, to, uh, to respond to something that they're not, you know. That it just it doesn't it doesn't communicate to them, you know. It's always I think a good idea too to uh, record yourself, and it's just so easy oh, if you don't have somebody right there in the room. If if something's not working, record yourself, text it over to your mentor, and say, Hey, what do you think about this? Absolutely, 
absolutely. And you know, kids are pretty honest. I mean, you ask them, uh, you know, which which way looks better. I mean, they, I mean, they will tell you. You know. Um, well, thank you so much for being on the program. This is great, and thank you for giving us just a snapshot of some of the things you've been talking about all over the state and in your clinics about conducting. It really opened my eyes, and I got a couple ideas. I'm going to go back to my band hall and. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to do some conducting without my uh, baton. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, um, I mean, I've seen some band directors that have done really, you know, really legato music sure. that have not used a stick, you know. So. Well, thank you again. Thanks and, for the opportunity. Uh, we'll hope to get you on the program again soon. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Beyond the Clef. For more great content, subscribe on our website at beyondthecleft.com. And be sure to follow us on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Facebook.